The Olympics are well and truly underway for Uganda, who managed to win two medals in the last week, especially when the athletics started. Join us today on Spotlight as we break down each and everything that is happening in Paris and what the future looks like for Ugandan sports. Welcome to Spotlight. My name is Faith Kiai. Today I'm joined by Charles Mutevi and Shafiq Senoga. Welcome, guys. Thank you, Faith. Thank you so much, Faith. I mean, there are so many things we could discuss about, you know, the last week for Uganda. Dreams came true for some. Uh, I, mean, I know there is some disappointment, uh, especially uh, in the fact that Kiplimo probably didn't add a medal as well to Uganda's, you know, medal tally. But I can take silver and gold at this point. I think it could have been worse, but it's much, much better than many people anticipated. Charles, what have you made of the Olympics? You have to acknowledge that uh, winning gold and silver is something that needs to be celebrated and um, kudos to Cheptegei and um, Chemutai for their achievements. Cheptegei's gold was very, very significant. First of all, the performance was exceptional. It was a tactical masterpiece. Um, it's, it's a race that he executed to perfection. It was a race that underlined uh, why he's a legend, a long distance legend. Um, so the performance was great. But the, the context of the race was also special because that is the title that he really wanted to win. He blew the opportunity to win it. 2021 was piffed by Barrega, partly because he was slightly out of form and his tactics on the day were off. This time, everything was perfect. If, if, if you want to see uh, a textbook performance, uh, a textbook approach to a 10,000 meter race, you go watch that. And this is from a Cheptege who, as far as his track shelf life is concerned, is at the end, um, is, is closer to the end than, to, than the beginning. And of course, he went on to announce that he's not running track again. So the context and the performance of Cheptege's gold were superb. You could argue that, they were ev that, that, that for Chemuta it was even greater. Mm. Than what than what Chiptege achieved, she only won silver. But that silver, the performance of Chemutai was even more impressive than than Chiptege. Why? Because this is not a performance you'd have predicted three months ago. I know Faith. We had an argument with you. <laughs> I was one of those people and who always. you said you are sure Chemutai is going to shine at the Olympics, but you. Your, your view was best <laughs> as usual. <laughs> Not so much on the fact <laughs> of, of, of how she was performing, but the fact that you, uh, you are an optimist. <laughs> optimist, and, uh, all right. Really, you should have been a lawyer because when you, when you, find, when you fight someone's corner faith, <laughs> you give everything. <laughs> and the argument I'm making is that at that time, the best time she had run when you made that case wasn't even better than one she had posted in, um, in Tokyo the 901, but you said you had seen something in the way that she was starting her races that convinced you she had something special. And then it wasn't even a month after that that she went to Los Angeles and ran that incredible 855. Now, that changed everything. Suddenly, she was a contender for the, for the gold medal. And until the last 20 meters, you could say 50 meters, I think, of the final... Uh, Stipoges women's final. She was winning the gold medal. She lost it to Yavi. She was heart, heartbroken. You know, Yavi is receiving 420,000 US dollars from Bahrain uh. for winning that gold medal, besides the 50,000 that World Athletics that, that World Athletics is awarding. If Chemuta had won that race, she would have won that 50,000. She would have also received. 50 million extra to what she's going to get from government. So you could say those tears <laughs> that, she, that, they were crying, that she was crying <laughs> where eh, had many zeros I, behind them. So, but putting aside that Chemutai's performance, it was incredible. It was a new personal base, new national record. Uh, it was faster than the fastest time that had been done in the Olympics. But for me, even more than that was the fact that the three years that she had after she won gold were terrible three years. Yeah. To the point that the Minister of Sports, Peter Guang, one time, you know, went to 
when he was doing the tour of the, the, the National Altitude Center, during a public address to the gathering, he talked about the private life of Chemutai as affecting her performance on the pitch. You know, the concerns about her performance, her deep in form, were so great that even the, sp the state minister. minister for sport felt that this is something that had to be addressed publicly rather than privately. So it was a Tory time. For her to come and perform the way she did was incredible. That is the good side. But I have to say, before you come in, Oshafiq, honestly, we still have made hopes. I insist we have made hopes. I think Chelimo can surprise us. I don't know if Shafiq agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> he can surprise us. Of course, surprise means that he's not an obvious medal contender, but he can surprise us because he's done it before. And I also think we have chances of winning a medal in the men's marathon. But I have to say the last three years since Tokyo have been wasted years, honestly. We have not made major strides as a nation, as far as Olympics, uh, as far as the Olympics are concerned, and that is significant because now you have the likes of Cheptege and Kiplimo calling it quits. Now Kiplimo hasn't said that he's leaving the track, but we know he loves the road. So we, 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 the challenge we have is that the fact that we didn't improve as a nation collectively, the fact that the, the two people who won Same the medals. medals um, have come back and won. We've not been able to identify athletes that we can say, okay, this athlete is young, let's give her three years or four years and see how she performs. For me, that means that collectively speaking, unless you know, we see something incredible from, from the other athletes who haven't run today, who haven't run yet, and we have quite a number of them. We have the, the ladies in the 10,000 meters women, we have the men's and women's marathon, we have I, I don't think Masli, Chelanga, and Stella. <laughs> Unless they do something incredible. Can pull a cut out of the bag. My view is that these Olympics may end up being um, a wake-up call for us. We, we, we will we'll walk away with a report card that says we are not doing the right things and something has to change. Definitely. Uh, and I think uh, leading up to the Olympics, one of the issues uh, Uganda Athletics Federation struggled with was getting the numbers of athletes, especially women. You know now, uh, you'd, you can say that, I, I feel like there's, there's quite a lot of potential with the, with the men. There's, there are some young athletes in the pipeline. I remember when there were qualifying athletes for the World Junior Championships that are set to happen uh, later this month. It felt like the boys, there were quite a number of options on the table for the Uganda Athletics Federation. But for the girls, um, I think we just, I think for me, when I, I think ab ab about, you know, where Ugandan athletics is and where they could go based of, off of the performances of the last few years, I feel like maybe it's high time. Another high altitude training center is also, you know, re I mean, developed in Western Uganda because if Captura is not giving you the numbers, then maybe you also need to tap into what the West could do. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of potential there. Uh, it's not been used in the last few years. And uh, for me, it, the most irritating thing was, you know, Perth running alone in these races. She has, they, I don't think I've seen Chemutai run with another female in a race ever in the steeplechase. You mean another female, another Ugandan female. Which is sad because we know the history of the steeplechase in terms of, you know, winning and what it has done for Ugandan athletics. Izikuru won there. But how is it possible that you go to line up at, you know, the Olympics and it's only Peru, And then the Kenya has a 19-year-old. And if you're, if you're thinking, you know, long term, they have... Uh, um, Beatrice Chep Chepkowicz in a race at 33, but she, she ha there is a 19-year-old who's setting faster times than her. So it's, it says a lot about, you know, what the future is going to, you know, the, the, future, the future is still bright for Kenya. And for us, we've kind of, you know, muddled it up. And I think to a large extent, you also have to blame the Uganda Athletics Federation. They are so fixated on the idea of when Cheptege is, 
you know, Cheptege is winning, we are winning, we are golden federation. They will tell you that night and day. And rightly so, you understand why they would, you know, want the world to know that they are a golden federation. But at the end of the day, these people only paper over cracks because now that Cheptege is going to the road, probably where he will have some wins and some losses. And it's not going to be easy to start with. It's something that's going to take time. While he's doing that, and I can tell that by missing, the, 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 by, you know, scratching on the 5,000, him and Kiplim are really selling the United <laughs> Federation. These are not our priorities at the moment because they are not injured. We saw so many athletes, you know, Fisher was back running the 5,000. Uh, you know, Ahmed, uh, Ahmed was back running the 5,000. People who want to be racing the 5K would have been on the, you know, would have been on, on, the, on, the, on the race track when they should have been there. I can understand recovering, but I mean, Cheptege is only, what, 20 something? <laughs> 27? I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not good with the, the ages <laughs> of Ugandan sports. <laughs> Actually, for me, for starters, uh, I'm one person who believes that uh, Uganda Athletics Federation probably, I'm not, not, not to use the word hoodwink, may it be very harsh. Because the reality is that uh, many of our top athletes in, in athletics are, are, are managed by uh, an international firm. Uh, they're in Captura, they are with them. Probably, as a federation, you, you wait for what law they plan, you don't see it actually. Because if you have they, your they, base... They work, they work on paperwork. <laughs> and, work on for international games. <laughs> and also maybe your tickets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. it, it, it creates why uh, we need to go beyond what we need to do as a federation. Because if you can't, if you're relying on, on the best, and, and, and I know even before... Jacob and uh, Joshua took this, this decision. I know probably the other running team, the NNN, yeah, they are yeah. with probably, had uh, an input with it. As a federation, actually, you have, I was actually sp uh, speaking last time that uh, when you saw that letter from uh, Coach Chiwa, mm. was actually informing the, uh, the, he the head of delegation in Uganda. Yet we expected the head of delegation to communicate to the, the entire country that, you know what? Kipulima and, and Chepte will not be part of this uh, 500 watt because probably they're, 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 they're recovering from what they completed 10,000. That shows you the weakness of the Federation because they're also not in touch with what, despite the fact that they celebrate that uh, the golden generation, but mm. what do you put on the table as a Federation? Because there are so many things. I've been agitating that. Uh, go back, look at some of the disciplines I've been competing in, in schools competitions, uh, in university competitions, the track and field events. Each and every other school's event, you see some of these things being competed. Uh, Javelin, uh, short put. Where do these people go after university? <laughs> because our focus has always been on long distance, probably, and, and marathon. Then where do these people go? We yet, we invest in, because there's a lot of money invested in uh, school's completions. That is about, I think, uh, this final, last financial year, they given, I think, about seven billion. Mm. That is under through the Ministry of Physical Education. But if I invest that uh, that money, yet output probably when these people leave a uh, school, university, where would they go? So I think for me, it's a role we need to sit down as a country and understand that uh, there is a lot we need to focus on so much. Yes, we know we have athletes that are going to compete, but how can we probably inquire others probably to come on on board? We have our roots have our have always been. Uh, uh, Captura and maybe uh, Sebe, I think. Where can we probably go? Think. I know there are so many people who can run from maybe from the west. Mm. In Uganda, I'm not certain. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I'm not certain that that have who can probably engage in athletics in Uganda. Mm. Uh, because you, you, you have Halim and, and, and Nanyondo. I, I, I'll not comment on those two. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm and Shafiq is <laughs> has been known to win the vocal <laughs> athletics. The vocal athletics. <laughs> so for me, that shows you how much you need, we need to put in mm. as, as a country. No, but, but the thing is this: uh, when you look at, for instance, the way Halim and Nanyondo came up, um, those early years, it, it was very much personal initiative, and of course, schools gave them uh, scholarships, and then they went to the university before they were signed and taken on by, by an agency um, that then turned them into the great athletes that they went on to become. 
I feel that if you are a government, you're going into the Olympics, and you know that you want Kiplimo to do a double for you, to, yeah. to run in, in both races, instead of saying, look, let us have, let's give this prize money to people who win 100 million or 50 million. Or, you know, for me, I felt, okay, the, you, you, that incentive is important. It's good. Other countries have it. We appreciate that. But I think in our context, yep. it's a bit dubious. I would rather you take, you say, we have this money that we want to give to athletes going to the Olympics. Mm. Why not we invest this money in their preparation? Instead of put them in a situation where we say, if you win this money, if you win the gold, silver, or mm. bronze, then you will be entitled to this money. Because I, 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 I do concede countries mm. award prize money, but I think in our context, since we want to motivate these athletes to okay, perform at Okay, from a Ugandan level, perspective, Charles. I would think if you had helped Kiplimo prepare, but for, they for have double, been supported. They have million. been supported, not by the government of Uganda, by the UOC. Yeah, but how, the how much money is still, that? How, how, how much money is that? Because that money comes from my I know, I know. It I doesn't know. make sense. Why are you It doesn't make sense I think to give me 50k it's per been day no, in terms no, of it's, my it's preparation. Been, I, and I think they've been, been receiving. No, they've been receiving a thousand dollars a month. A thousand dollars a month. Yes. It's particular athletes. The, the, particular, that's what you said, particular. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The mm. likes, I, I know so, that okay, so, so, the, so, the elite so, athletes are probably... Okay, so for the elite athletes, uh, at, at the end of that, that's what, 12,000 US dollars? I, I don't think it was all year. I think it was like yeah. three months so, or four so, leading so, so, up to... Because no, they, 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 of course, I don't give yeah. you so, the so entire how, year. So, so how much impact is that supposed to make on an Of course, it's like not a huge more. impact, but yeah. I just so wanted that to... For me, my, my view is this. When, but you want to, if you know these are the athletes who are likely to win medals for us, let us put them in a situation where we, we beef up their preparations with some extra, say 50 million. That's what I wanted to say. 100 million. Hmm. Two years to the Olympics. Yeah. So we tell Kiplimo, look, this is the money we're investing in you. We expect you to do a double with your feet. You invest some of that money in learning how to recover between races. You plan. Because I was talking to someone who was telling me that after the 10,000 meter final, he saw Kiplimo being, you know, uh, put in a meeting by government officials, pleading with him <laughs> to come <laughs> wow. and do 5,000. <laughs> and I think from the body language, you could tell Kiplimo was telling them, guys, I I'm not doing well. Mm -hmm. I'm broken down. Mm. Look, the Hamids must be feeling the pain. The, the guys who, are, who did the 10,000 and doing the... That, 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 they're not like spring chicken. They're not there saying, we feel great. Mm. They're going in there with their bodies aching. They're going there to, to fight. Because this is an Olympics. It comes around once in four years. If, if, if you can run, you get on the track and you do your best. But because I feel sometimes there's a disconnect between these elite athletes and the government... Sometimes the government doesn't have the moral authority to ask these players, of the, these, these athletes of these favors. Because I've been training for three years, and all you've given me to prepare for being here is what? About 5,000 US dollars. And I've won so much more. So for me, I feel like I, I appreciate the government with the prize money, but I think it would be more effective if you identify these athletes. Tell them, you tell them, guys, we want these athletes to perform at this level. Let's invest 500 million into prepping this number of athletes to get from one level to the next. Because the moment you win an Olympic medal, the number of doors it opens for you is That's incredible. So we know that, for instance, Cheptege is, supposed to, is entitled to a bonus from Nike, you know, with whom he has a, a contract for winning that. You know, so in my view, I feel, you know, as you guys have pointed out, that more could have been done to ensure that we, 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 we put ourselves in a better position. The, the pulling out of the 5,000 meters of Cheptege and, and Kiplimo, I think for me, left a bitter taste in the mouth. Because they went into the Olympics knowing that they are the be, only ones. We, we will be burnt out after the 10,000 meters. Mm. This is not something that is new to them. They have done it before. They could have, I, I also felt like, you know, government, they could have, ex, I mean, the Uganda Athletics Federation should have explored a scenario where at least one of those two is not, you know, registered for two events. I mean, it, it even shocked so much. Um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm in one of uh, in one of WhatsApp groups of aesthetics, and one of the officials was actually inquiring if Kiprima and Cheptegui will do the 5K, and I'm like, if if an official at the federation does not know whether these two will make it, then then a federal gun out there, how will he probably know? That shows you the I situation. Think I think, uh, mm. the, the, uh, honestly, yeah, they are superstars. They've reached a point where they feel like small gods mm. in, you know, in the federation. And uh, for me, my, uh, my take was always, I think the Uganda Athletics Federation should have covered off in the event that these people, they should have had other athletes lined up to represent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I think we've seen these situations, uh, uh, like um, I, was, I, I was looking at the, I was seeing the issues with, you know, Jamaica and the Shelley and Fraser prices, and uh, of course, um, Sherika Jackson. And I sat down and I said, one of the reasons why, you know, Jamaicans are livid with these two is the fact that they did not give the Federation an opportunity to pull them out and replace them. Had the, from the word go, had you said I'm injured, nobody would have you know, begrudged you of that chance. I mean, I'd be, I'd be, nobody would have felt like you've done something wrong. But I look at our situation and I'm like, okay, so if Joshua and his colleague were one, not 100%, should have told the Federation, we can only do one race. And I Either put me in the 5K or put me in the 10. But I will me, not come for both. I believe, I believe for me, they weren't knowing probably they would only do one race. Even the Uganda Athletics Federation yeah. knew that. Yeah, and they, I they think do one race. that's where decisions should have been made. Mm -hmm. That these, these people are going to run 10,000 mm -hmm. and look for other young kids. I feel like there are so many young kids out there. They, 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 they want these opportunities. I mean... Uh, we should not be, you know, held hostage simply because people have, you, you've been the most successful Ugandan athletes of the last decade. I mean, we had Kipro teach and God honestly, he also, you know, fizzled mm -hmm. out. And, uh, whether you want it or not, the way you go up, you have to come down at a certain point. And I would have really, really, really liked an opportunity to either see a young man given that opportunity. And... And these are things, these are conversations that should happen four years before the Olympics. You know, you have to, you have to project and know mm -hmm. four years from now, we may, we may need to have another set of runners in the 5,000 meters instead of these two. So you have to safeguard yourself before you go, you ensure you invest in other runners to qualify for those, uh, those, the, the, those competitions because they'll tell you, well, those competitions are by merit. You didn't have runners who call it. But that is where, because what we have in Captura is a base of willing runners who just need that arm and leg up to get to this level. And that's where, as UAF and, and, and government, you have to step in. So for me, yes, we congratulate Shep Tege, uh, Chemutai, and we hope there are other medals. But I think these Olympics, um, looking back, uh, on what has transpired between 2020 or the 2020 Olympics and these ones, I think we've gone backwards. And my worry for me is that there, we are not sure whether we have a plan to change that before Los Angeles. Well, away from Uganda, I know that there have been um, very you know, interesting things that have happened on and off the track. I, I, I know you probably have your Olympic moments at least uh, so what, far. Was Omedi's goal in the Olympics? No. <laughs> no, but <laughs> it definitely it, 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 it would have been it would have hit hard had it, you know, had it been scored in the... Imagine if he scores that at the Olympics. You know, at, uh, at, uh, at the, the Stade, Stade de France or at the Parc de Prince, Princes. But um, that's not you know, in the, in the agenda for now, but very good goal, I must say. <laughs> Guys, what has been your moment of the Olympics? Could positive and negative? Um, of course, you, you, you can't, for me, you can't look beyond Chep Gay and Chep Um I'm being a very objective Ugandan uh, fan and saying those have been the best moments of the Olympics. Outside those, the 1,500 meters final, men's final, was an epic race. It was an epic race. It was an epic race because it, it, it went, it was as explosive as everyone predicted, except 
<laughs> the winner. Bits and not winning. <laughs> Except the winner uh, is no one anyone anticipated. <laughs> and it just goes to show you just how difficult it is to win an Olympic title. Nothing is, is predicted. Nothing is given. We saw that in the women's 5,000 meter final where everyone thought Faith Kipiegon just has to show up to pick a medal. I think she had set the record mm. a few weeks. Record holder. Yeah, a few weeks before that final. And, and Beatrice Tibet produced an incredible race. But the difference is she's the 10,000 record holder. She is. She is. And that, that's a different ball game right a, there. It's a different ball game. But the, the way she masterfully executed that race. Again, she was a bit, you know, the hype was around Kipiegon and Sefan Hassan. Just like the hype was around Inge Bristen and Josh Carr in the 1,500 meters. And so this Chebet was ignored. And, and naturally, well, so far she has been a quiet person. She's in the background. Mm. She produced an incredible race. Uh, those two moments for me have been incredible. They remind you that don't take the success that you see from Cheptegei and Chemotai for granted. Because winning a medal at that level <laughs> is not as easy as you think. You can be the favorite and blow it on the day because of nerves, because you, you just feel the pressure. You, you, can, you can tell Inga Briston is letting the pressure get to him, without a doubt. The pressure, that's his I favorite race. I think he's an incredible pesetta. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is his favorite <laughs> race. But in the last three major finals, he has failed to win gold in that race. This time it wasn't even on the podium. And that's why, for instance, when people want to write off Ali Manakai, I always say, please don't write off Ali Manakai. Mm -hmm. That gold medal that she won in 2019 made her a legend. Winning gold at these games, these games at the games of these calibers, is, it takes so much. You look at a thing more, the most talented 800 meters runner. Is watching she, from she's, her she's watching from the US <laughs> because she didn't qualify because she was stripped. So much can go wrong that for you to win that medal, you come through so much. And so for me, the success of Cheptege, uh then Chemutai, and also the, the reality checks that we saw with Inga Briston, Joshka, and Faith Kipiogon, uh, for me, those, are, those have been my moments of the Olympics. Shafiq, what has been your moment of the Olympics? I think for me, that, that turnover for Cheptege for me, uh, because when you look at all the biggest part of that race before he won uh, that gold, uh, I don't think we had given him a chance looking at how the race was going. We thought the Ethiopians were going to dominate it, uh, including uh, Kiplimo, uh, because he was probably close to them. Unfortunately, I think in the last two or three laps, things changed and uh, Cheptege probably came back trying to see that uh, he takes over the race. Then. Uh, the disappointing bit of it may be, I'll, uh, I'll go with Nakai. When Nakai, you know when I watched that first hit, uh, even the commentator was insisting it's one of the top favorites. And when you look at uh, the time she made in that hit, compared, because I was, I was looking at the second hit. The second hit, I think, uh, the first athletes, for, I think from 1 to 7, had won 158. I think the eighth one, the one who had, I think, two something. Naka, if Naka had actually competed in the second hit, would have not even been among the, the, the top seven. Because in the second hit, everyone had one eight, one probably the only the only defying from seconds. So for me, I had a lot of confidence in her, looking at how she has been performing in the previous engagements. But uh, for me, that hit probably I uh, I don't say I lost so much, but uh, as a uh, as a fan was so much eager to see her probably make it to the final, I felt disappointed. Well, uh, I think my moments of the, uh, I have quite a number of moments. I think, um, of course, away from the Ugandan medals, Chepte Gay and how masterfully he completed the job. And, you know, Perik Chemutai taking, you know, the rest to everyone and decided to set the pace. And I liked that a lot about, you know. Although I get the feeling of maybe she, she would have benefited from slowing down a little bit yes, in uh, the last two laps just to store energy for a strong finish. Yeah, I also thought that I, I thought she would, you know, take off like at, at the bell, not allow those. Uh, Especially Yavi. Like the Yavi way is too explosive. Like she did in Tokyo, she did not, you know, she didn't respect the competition in Tokyo. She decided to actually sprint 
at with with about uh, 300 to go and I thought she would do that but she didn't do that and I think she paid but you know that's a way I actually one of my moments of you know uh, the Olympics has got to be judo I was watching the team final between mm -hmm. France mm -hmm. between France and um, Japan and uh, it was very very interesting because I don't watch judo I don't even I didn't even know the rules until I had to watch uh, but for me it was intense the intensity of that fight japan you know judo is from japan i think you, you might be the only ugandan who watched that fight very very good <laughs> uh, actually we have, we have a judo association here I think yeah it was do. yeah i, I think <laughs> you and the people who <laughs> no it's it's the, the thing for me that stood out about it is you know we've heard of teddy renier and his greatness in the, france the, the, the black the yeah the the big six eight six foot eight you know mm. uh over 90 kilogram fighter wow. and I'd not seen Teddy in, in full. I'd never watched him. I've always seen him. I saw him. I heard about his gold medal. So in a team situation, I was wondering, what's interesting about this man? And I, I came and uh, when I started watching that thing, France was 3-0 down. Because their fighters, Japan had managed to get, they needed only two, I mean, two wins. And then the bout, I mean, it was, it, yeah, two, three, two, uh, three zero lead. And they needed only two more, you know, uh, wins. And then the, the gold was the for goal. Japan. And I found that this fight, Japan had prepared this heavyweight jud judoka for this moment. When they lost the team final to France in 2021, 20, they told themselves, let's get a young boy, make sure, prepare him for this man in particular and he schooled the kid. As if that was not enough, they managed to level the tie. And now it goes to sudden death, and they spin the wheel. Who's going to, you know, who's going to give France the victory in this very important game? And 90 plus kilograms splashes, and everyone, <laughs> the whole arena went crazy. Before they, he even started, they just knew the it, gold the was, was ours. Was sure. And it was so sad for Japan because they were so crestfallen. They, they I, I mean, it was, uh, that's for me, that's the first time I started watching judo. And I think I'm now going to continue with the judo. But I also have to say on the track. But, that, but your man is almost retiring, isn't he? Yeah, he's done. He's done, done. for. So but you're not going to watch him again. I'm a new fan. I'm a new fan now. <laughs> I, want, I want to see other things. The sport intrigued me. But uh, the other thing that also, you know, was very impressive for me from that has been okay impressive for me from the Olympics was the four hundred meter final. Quincy Hall winning it on the line. Everyone I'm not, I'm, thought I'm not sure I am not sure I, I like their technique. Chest <laughs> barley and it's like no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Matthew like Hudson's... It's like they're running to the labor ward or something. <laughs> they look so uncomfortable. I think... Uh, my, my, my apologies to... No, the worst, no, the worst thing about the 400, uh, that's when you're, you're, you're dead on your feet. But, but I thought uh, my, that's why you see people I laboring. I Michael Johnson made it more graceful. Some people look nice when they're doing, you know, <laughs> bad things or hard things. <laughs> but I think, you know, with Matthew Hudson Smith, he's oh. a very... Uh, it's so hard on the eye. Yeah, he's, it's, 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 he's a hard watch. You don't see Silk when he's running. But I, I thought... That was painful, wasn't He it? went into that final very confident, oh, thinking really? it was his. Yes, he was a favorite in terms of times and how he had run through the hits and all of these things. So it's, uh, it was a major, major disappointment for him to be beaten on the line. But I must say, Quincy... Quincy Hall, eh? Yeah, that was for me... The, I did expect him to come back from there. Kiplimo faded in the in the ten thousand meters final. Mm. I, I thought he let go of the rope too soon, because you really have to die to cross that finish line. Uh, th that's uh, something. I'm because when you look at N Noah, Noah didn't give up until he crossed the line. You look at the one thousand five hundred meters final that I mentioned. Nogus was almost peeping car. Hoka was was dying to cross the line. Actually, and then even the four hundred meters final. Quincy Hall just didn't, I think, didn't give up. I don't know. I think I, I, I thought Kiplimo let go and you have to fight because, mm -hmm. by the way, by the time Kiplimo started fading, he was ahead of um, of the, the the silver medal winner, the Ethiopian. The Ethiopian. The, um, mm -hmm. uh, who? I forget. 
that young Berehu. Uh, no. Berehu. Uh, uh, right. He was out of Berehu came in, with the last, almost he came in the last 10 meters to go. Beru wasn't in the picture. He only came almost in the last 20 And I think meters. for I felt, me... I felt when Kiplimo saw... I think there was still room for him to fight. And anything can happen in those last 20 meters. I think it's indicative of, you know, Ugandan athletics. I think there's still a long way for us to go. Our athletes, I, I'm sorry to say, but a good number of the ones who have lost uh, probably are... Um, some, they, they don't... I think they don't know how to die a little. When Halima snatched that gold medal in 2019 well, from yeah, Ajay she, Wilson, she, mm. she really, I think, surprised herself. And these days, I feel like a good number of our athletes, they kind of, when they get, uh, like today I was watching the Reaper Charge 800, and I was watching Dradiga. He said the new, a new national record. And you could tell that with... 100 to go. He thought he could do it. But I think he reached that point. I don't know what they call that point where you, you think you cannot go anymore. And he just, I think, let go. I think he thought that better than me anyway. But he actually had the beatings of these guys. You could tell. Because they're, they're dying too. They're also, they're, they're also simply, running at the end of their abilities. They're also struggling. So I, I feel like I think Kiplimo could have done better. Um, I thought once he noticed that Cheptege is going to win, that kind of... But you have to run your race. Uh. You have to fight. You have to... Fisher, the American who won, fought, you know, to cross the finish line. I think that is something that you need to work on as an athlete. I get to the last 50 meters and I'm done. I'm dying. I need to have that... I need to have the willpower to push and cross the finish line. And I think that um, we've seen that... In, in the races that you mentioned, and we've kind of missed it out um, from some of our athletes, from, from Kiplimo in particular, I thought he could have done better in the last 100 meters when he just let go. Yeah, and I think one of the athletes I do expect to have some finishing power has got to be um, Chelimo. I actually liked Chemutai last night as well. Apart Leonard. from the fall, I thought he looked comfortable. I wanted to see him finish the race. That would have given us a better picture of where he is as an athlete. But I must say, for me, I'm not disappointed in Team Uganda. We are only 21, I mean, 21 athletes, especially in athletics. There were only, I think, 22. Uh, so 20, 21, and then the other four came from swim, uh, swimming, cycling, 25. and um, and and rowing. So 21, 21 runners. I think for Four me, with years. the athletics team, they've done, I think, bear me, they've done what we thought they could do. I, I, would, I would want to disagree with you, Faith. Really? 21. I, I'd want to disagree with you because for me, I'm looking at it in the perspective of we did this in Tokyo. Have we improved in, in have we made strides uh, in, in Paris, of course that could change because we still have runners in the competition but I feel like we've not been able, b because so sometimes you, you, you look at the success uh, on the basis of what the future promises, if you look at the, the young athletes that we took, you're not sure what to expect from them in the next you, we can't say for instance that Belinda or Chepkoich or Chebet will be in Los Angeles competing for, for glory in the 5,000 meters. And it's not because they lack talent, because they have it, but it's because we don't really have a plan as UAF to take those girls from where they are to where we think they need to be. When you see Chebet, when Chebet appeared onto the scene, I'm talking about the, 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 the lady who won 5,000 meters, you could see a runner with special talent, but it was a bit raw. You see her now, and you see an athlete who has moved to another level. She won um, the cross country title earlier this year. Uh, defended it, actually. Yeah, she had she won it in it. Bathurst. You saw how special she looked in winning the 5,000 meters. You can see an athlete who is going from one level to the other. We struggle with helping athletes take that level, and we need to have those conversations. So, for me, Cheptege coming back and winning gold is, as, is, is really a personal victory for him. You, you can't really say, you can put your hand on his success and say, this is the contribution that was made by authorities at the UAF 
and these are the fruits. And actually, actually, even it, 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 it explains reasons because his target was probably win that because he had not won it. When reached a five goal, probably has won. And There's the one no thing reason of actually com of competing. I must say, Chapta guys, ego has served us well here in Uganda because every time people, <laughs> I feel like with the ten thousand, it was because the people kept saying. No matter what he has won, as long as he didn't have yeah. that Olympic gold, yeah. uh, they still talk about how classic Kenenisa Bekele is. And uh, I always knew that with Cheptegei's ego, <laughs> I knew he, he's, he's such he, a fighter. He was very capable of crossing the finish line simply because he's such a fighter. of the naysayers. He's such a fighter. But think about this. Normally, in other countries, when an athlete, a great athlete or a world champion pops onto the scene, it inspires other athlete, athletes to come and follow in their footsteps. Nakai won the 2019 World Championship. We've not, we've not seen other Nakais. Not at all. Coming. You know, we, we've, we've not seen people going to, okay, let's say, to, this, to, to schools you know, in central Uganda and say, this is your model. You take Nakai on a tour of schools here, mm. partner with schools like Chitende that love sport or whatever, and say, let's try to look for another Nakai Owen Nanyondo. We're not doing that. I remember when I was at Mukono, I met some girls, some, you know, kids who are in Gombeses. They are uh, Abdallah Muhammad, the general secretary. He, he's a teacher there. So he always brings those kids for trials. And what one of them was telling me, hey, you know, one of the worst things about, you know, these things, but uh, this running is so hard on this Tinder. Like you run and you feel like you can't go anymore. And <laughs> I remember when Adome Pius, one of you know, the sprinters, uh, was talking about, he had been training in Kenya on the Tatan for the whole athletic season. But now, uh, with the f like with weeks to go to the national championship, he decides to come back to Uganda because people like these things. They like saying, I'm the champion. When, do you know Adome came and he failed to win races in Mukono? He said that Tatan was fighting. I mean, the Tinder. Yeah. He was fighting the yeah. Tinder like it physically. You're you're pushing your body, but it's not doing what it's supposed to do because of you know the facilities. And I'm really grateful that you know with Nambole, at least I know that even if athletes would be using the inside track, as long as the outside track is available, and if the ministry can assure runners or you know, I mean people, our abiding athletes, that they can go and train as they please, or at least have access to it at least once a week. I think that will make a big difference. One of the reasons the Naka is used to live in Mukon, I mean in, in Chideka or where you're getting, was because they just wanted to walk down to Nambole, do a few drills, go back home. Those things, even if you tell someone you have to train five times a day or four, three times a day, they know in the morning, eight o'clock, I'm supposed to be on the track. Go take my morning rest, go back again in the afternoon, then go back again in the evening. I just hope that, you know, the purposes for which the hotels and all those things, they, they serve the athlete and it's not going to, you know, to line some people's pockets. And, and that's why for me, I can't say that we have improved in Paris. We've really gone backward. You, you, you clearly mentioned that there's no other chem, there's no other chemotai out there. But of course, uh, there was that girl who missed um, Chekwe Moy. She missed by a, a, I mean, a, a tiny bit the opportunity. I, they say at the Africa Games, you know, without all the drama that was surrounding, she could have also qualified for the steeplechase. But yeah, me, but, I would but rather if, see if six. It, six athletes competing for the right. I am, um, to be honest, I'm kind of done with this whole qualifying by standard i feel like even if you've you've qualified by standard you need to run a national trial to earn the right and i feel like if the kiplimos and the chapter gays were actually running national trials to earn the right to represent uganda we would not be hearing some of the drama we wouldn't we wouldn't and, and that is something those are the conversations that need to happen they are not happening and and that is why our performance at the Olympics, um, sometimes it's deceptive. It is deceptive. We are not able to qualify a team for boxing uh, this time, uh, largely because of problems in the administration. Actually, it, because even look at swimming, okay, they gave us two wild cards. 
the rower probably because of the facilities Again. up where still, in the US. Yes. Uh, Kajimu, and she's cycle, also not returning. The yeah. yeah. cycle is so, Kajimu because probably he has been uh, yeah, competing in Kenya for better. Clearly shows you how much we need to improve as a country because if you are asking uh, um, for some of these medals, also probably need, you need to go back and look at how much I've been investing in trying so that uh, at this point I can also excel. Well, uh, that is it from the, the Olympics, but uh, let's quickly switch over to the football where we have two teams uh, preparing to play in, you know, the CAF Confederations Cup and the CAF Champions League. Villa and Chitara are in a race, of course, we're in a race against time to get a venue in which they could play their, you know, qualifiers. And now we have Villa playing at Nambole, Chitara choosing to go and play in Benghazi. It's a disaster. It's a, it's a, disaster. <laughs> it's a disaster that um, we don't have Ch Chitara playing here. I mean, their fans would have loved that. It, it's, it's, it's awful. It's terrible. I mean, you, the team is missing out on finances. For me, it's, it's terrible. I, um, and, and, and for me, this is, this is not Chitara's loss. It's Uganda's loss. Because, I, I, like, to be honest, Shafiq, you know, you're the football expert here. What shocked me was the fact that a Ugandan side decided, let's go and play two legs in Libya. How does that help them? Mm, I don't think it will, it will, it's going to help them much. Because the right is that uh, when you look at all the facilities in Africa that were certified by CAF to host these inter-club competitions. It is only Chitende and uh, Azam Complex who are, sat who are actually individual facilities. The rest of the facilities that are under that category are, are, are probably owned by government. Chitala I thought, because their first uh, target, if they failed probably to use Chitende, was to go to Egypt and uh, play from there. But I think uh, the facility, hiring a facility was a bit uh, expensive. And uh, going to uh, Bengaza and uh, the, the things of course they give them as a club, uh, probably you, you, you not spend much on the field. And uh, so that also helped them a bit of it. And I think they also work on a, a few things because I mean, as, as, as Bengaz, if I'm not traveling uh, to camp, that means probably I can probably get part, part of my budget and public, get some of the things maybe Chitara trying to ask as a team. Of course, as a club, you also lose that home advantage because yeah. many of the fans would have wanted to watch Chitara, uh, probably at, at Namboli. And uh, unfortunately, that did not uh, count out. And it was late because yesterday, I think I was speaking to, the, to, the, to their president and was telling me, when uh, they gave Villa an opportunity, they would have actually wanted also to probably cancel, but already they had actually secured the tickets and they couldn't actually change anything because the team has to travel. Uh, by Monday, that's when they're supposed to travel. So it was bad for Ugandan football that uh, a team uh, has no first where they're going to play from. And for me, it, it even even goes beyond the club itself. I think uh, as a country, we, sh we shouldn't be in a situation of, 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 of whereby, as a country, okay, if we, even if we have Namboli, we need to have more Nambolis that uh, even if probably a private in investor doesn't probably in case it doesn't probably is engaged elsewhere you also have a plan b i mean on on, on that list of the certified uh, facilities morocco i think has has five pitches mm. uh egypt has like f five pitches south africa has like eight pitches mm. why is it a, a criminal problem to see that uganda also you have four pitches on that we only have two <laughs> We are coming, we are coming. I don't know, but it, it, it creates much, a, a very bad image actually for our country because we're a country that's supposed to host uh, AFCON because even our neighbors here are Kenya. Don't their have. teams are going to play from you. Actually, Kenya is supposed to play, they're supposed to play which team in uh, the 2025 AFCON qualifiers. They will play at Namboli. They don't play in Kenya. It is only Tanzania. And Tanzania also, they have only one facility. That is the the main uh, Azam and also I think uh, the, the what the, the I'm National sorry, Stadium. what's wrong National with Stadium. the Kasaranis and they're still working on them. they're still probably doing a bit of re renovations so they can't probably uh, meet the cap standards. So for me, it's a bigger question that uh, we need to look out that uh, if you want to excel as a country, there are things you need to put into a priority. When you 
get a 17 billion and invest in a sport when there's no facility because FIFA themselves have also been that I mean there's the FIFA project of Kadiba it has taken years without being completed every time there is a uh, if I, uh, officials come here, probably they get bricks and they start working on maybe <laughs> two days before they come. <laughs> but it's taken years without being completed. There is the Logogo facility here down. It's also, you can probably consider it as a government, a government facility. There's land, I think, for a boat, I think, in, in a... They did not buy it. It was, the, 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 it was supposed to be a partnership between them and Buganda. In Ilugazi, where they're supposed, they're supposed, to, they're supposed to build. Go to Akibua. Go to, uh, we have so many stadiums actually. Mbare Heroes, we should actually have all the regional stadiums fit, probably to host. But because you can't do that, you, you'll find even situations whereby now we only have, we only have that is Namboli. So we are going to probably exo exhort Namboli that every other, probably support every other country because no one will be willing to go to Chichene because of the cost they probably they charge as a, as a what? As a, as a facility. So we're going to exhort Namboli. Every other activity will be at Namboli because once a government facility, and uh, their price probably may not be high compared to what it offers. offers. I feel like the number of facilities, uh, the, 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 the groundsman and everyone who's fixing everything down there is frustrated because <laughs> they've not yet hand, handed over the stadium. Mm. And I remember with the rugby, you could tell that these people, yes, they're passionate about their jobs, mm. but they were so frustrated. Like, mm -hmm. imagine, You've brought the grass, the grade of, you know, the, 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 the pitch to, you know, almost Emirates Stadium quality grade. And next thing you know, you have people scrumming. I mean, you have a scrum and about a whole chunk of, you know, grass and soil is off. And you have to come back and lay it down whenever you get a break. I think they are very frustrated now. If Nambola is what is viable for many teams in this region, and I know that if even Kenyan teams probably, if things don't, you know, if they don't, I mean, finish their innovations in time, are these people going to hand over the kind of pitch they thought they were going to hand over? Because it's a bit frustrating for, you know, for them, because they also have deadlines. They have to, you know, I know now, now that the, um, the, 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 the running track is it's in the process done. of completion, it means <laughs> that they're also looking at their deadlines. And every time they say, first put down your work, these people have to play. It's, a, it's going to be a frustration that I don't think Uganda. I, I have no issue with that. I mean, the stadium is there to be employed. Um, so, and, and it's not like they're doing charity, they get paid for that work. So <laughs> I have no issue with them having to deal with, with, with sorting out the grass every time it is, um, it's moved out of place. For me, my, my concern with, with what has happened with Chitara is that sometimes we as Ugandans don't have that sense of, of nationhood, you know. And there's a sense of, ah, that is Chitara, you know, that's their business. And we, we, we have as a nation, it's not an easy thing, but I think we have to outgrow that mentality. We are petty. Yeah, there, are thing, there are fights that should be national fights. When you have a Chitara going to play in the Confederations Cup, we should rally. And Vipers that. telling you it's not available. That is true. Vipers, of in course. In full cups. Yes, be, 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 you know, because Vipers and, and Chitara had issues uh, when they were fighting for the title last year. Uh, Lawrence Mulindwa felt that you know, it is time to pay back Chitara. You know. Uh, in, in, in Buganda, they say, Omukada kwa siza kumere ye. Obviously, Mulindwa knows that, knows that proverb very well, and he was, he was, he was putting it to, <laughs> to good use. But we have to be bigger than that as a nation, uh, because I think v a, a, a competitive chitara is good for vipers. It's, it's good for vipers. So as vipers, as much as you want to win the league, you want to win a league that has strong teams, competitive teams like Vipers and so and Chitara. So w when they need you to help them, you have to be bigger than that. A allow them to use the facility, you know. And um, of course, we have the potential to have so many facilities in this nation, but we all know about the corruption. We all know about the fact that people, we we've not been able to, 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 people would rather steal money that is meant to build a facility 
than build that facility and make money off it for the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. you know, so we, 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 we don't know how to, to get this equation right. You know? So that for me is the really, really, it's, it's a shame that you try to play in Benghazi, both games. Uh, and I is, asked myself, is it Benghazi or was <laughs> This is, some, this is something, yeah, I mean, that's where the war was. <laughs> this is something that should never happen ever again. I mean, you have to feel for Chitara. And, um, oh boy, it's a, it's a shame. It's a shame on Uganda that, that Chitara have been abandoned and most, forced to play. Uh, most um, definitely. Uh, quickly, guys, uh, we've run out of time, but uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, the... The, quite literally the community but, but, shield. But before you do that, Villa will be at Nambol. <laughs> community <laughs> shield. <laughs> the community shield. Uh, we have uh, Man United taking on City this weekend. Uh, what are? Let me go with the United fan first. Shafiq, what are the chances that Manchester United frustrates Manchester City? Before Shafiq says anything, I'm sorry to, to be naughty, but I remember Shafiq at this time last year. <laughs> Telling us that United are going to win the title. Javik <laughs> was title? banned. <laughs> Javik, title? Javik was banned by the Euros. <laughs> he has not recovered. Javik, Javik predicted that United were title contenders last year. Of the FA. And they won. <laughs> <laughs> FA Premier League, not the FA Cup. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, uh, uh, for Tassas, for me, I don't want to look at this as, uh, as something probably because... There's a long season probably United are going to have. And uh, even if probably they win uh, the competition, I don't want probably to come down and tell you that uh, it's already finished article. I believe mean, for me there's a lot probably. Eric Ten Hag and this team are supposed to probably to improve as a team. Of course, they're facing a city side that uh, is well equipped. They have not lost so many players. They still have that cream that's going to be competitive even next season. And I believe for me, if United... Even if they don't win this competition, probably give us a good performance in the league. That would be wonders. Doesn't make sense. Uh, there's, there's been that talk that if someone wins the community shield, he doesn't probably win the Premier League. And uh, and I know so many Arsenal fans uh, uh, would be supporting us probably to win. Uh, <laughs> for maybe we will be supporting Manchester may, maybe to win, and for them probably the challenge for the really? title. Really? Yeah. Really? I've, I've heard that, that talks out uh, somewhere. No, Shafiq, <laughs> that is. A, <laughs> I don't uh, know. And one of them is on this stage. <laughs> yeah, that, when Manchester wins the Community Shield, be certain we shall watch and win the Premier League. Mm. Uh, but. Certainly, I don't think for me this can probably wedge in how teams are going to be competitive. I think for me, there's still so much to fight for. Well, uh, it's a very interesting time for, you know, Manchester City because uh, I don't think City have made a significant <coughs> signing at this point in the season. I don't know whether they are, you know, charging, waiting for, for a big, you know, overhaul next but, but, year. But they have sold Alvarez. And so they're going to be able to, to, to make another signing or two. But City, they, 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 I think they do good business. Away from all their drama of, you know, I mean, cheating the system 10 years ago. I think they've reached a point where they've balanced their books so much so that um, uh, they, 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 they now have, you know, they are, they are liquid. They have quite the cash in the reserves. Do they? And last year, yes, City no. have the money. They have the resources. Uh, they don't, I, I don't think they make quite a bit of losses on their players. If they can get, you know, 80 million out of Julian Alvarez, who has not really set the league ablaze. Uh, I, I actually, in my gut, I thought this is some sort of money laundering. I'm sorry. Some, of Atletico Madrid. Somewhere, yeah. somehow, I thought that, that, sh that, that they, they, I think I was thinking this has to balance itself out somewhere. But um, I don't know if, if City hold on to you know, Kevin De Bruyne, I think they still are going to be a serious problem in the league. My issue is if he goes, I don't think they have a classy player. But in this community shield, I do think, you know, United, Lightning won't strike twice. I don't think. Beating them in the FA Cup, and also, I don't think the city will allow you <laughs> to win the, the community, sh community shield from under their noses. I know, I know what to expect of City. City. City are going to come. They have an identity. You know what to expect of them. They're going to play beautifully. For me, the, the, the concern is with United. You know, <laughs> really, honestly. You look at the preseason they've had. 
they have lost three games. Rosenberg, Liverpool, Arsenal. They beat Betis and uh, Rangers, I think. Mm -hmm. Those are the, the, the victories there. Now, they suffered injuries. Hoyland and uh, Yolo. Is Yolo. it called Yolo? Yeah. Lenny Yolo. Yolo is out. Mm -hmm. uh, Ski players like um, Martinez have just come back from the Copa America. I don't think this is the kind of preseason United wanted to have, given yes. the season they had last year. So for me, that is where the issue is. Because I see the relationship between Ten Hag and United as a doomed marriage. They, they just put off the divorce, but it's coming. The last thing United need is to start the season poorly. They have a, they have a rude Vanessa Roy in the pipeline. No, I, but I don't think that makes things easier, to have someone who has come to replace you. I don't think it makes things easier as a coach. For me, my concern for United is they want to... You, they are still a team that doesn't have an identity. You know, you don't, when you, you don't know what to expect from United. Their identity is very winning, Dutch. Even, I must say that. Even when they are winning trophies, um, they won, they, of course they won the Carabao Cup last year and the FA Cup, you didn't feel like Ten Hag is taking this club in a certain direction. They play a certain way. And I don't think that the extra one year they gave him is going to lessen the pressure on him. So you, for City, this may not be a big deal. But if United come and are hammered 5-0, I will not be surprised if Shafiq is calling for Ten Hag's head on Monday, <laughs> saying, no, this man is not taking us anywhere. So, no, by the way, I've been, uh, I've been realistic, from, uh, I think, for the last season. I'm one person, even despite the fact that uh, Ten Hag has, has won, I'm one person who believes that for me, last season was his time probably to leave the club. And uh, like I told you, for me, when, 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 when Eric came in, I, th I think his first season, I think there was, there was so much even had anticipated from him. And uh, we did not actually judge him because we thought it was his first time in the Premier League. But then his second season, actually, it was worse. There are so many records that have been broken against United last season. Uh, I mean, you go Middlesbrough beat you for zero at Old Trafford. So many teams have actually done it so many times. It's been actually the song being denied. And I, I mean, for me, I thought that was the artistic probably the club was going to use. But uh, like someone wants to build a project, maybe you can give him a chance <laughs> this season, which I don't think probably is going to change so much. And uh, like, I, like I believe that if you have Ruth Bannister there as one of his assistants, maybe you never know. He understands where. The club the United public needs to go back. And uh, in case Eric leaves, maybe he will take over. I, I, I fear for United, honestly. <laughs> I fear for United because I don't think they, this is a preseason where they have made progress. <laughs> and knowing the tension that already exists between Ten Hag and United fans, <laughs> it's like Petro that's just waiting for a match <laughs> of fire to be lit. <laughs> That is the situation, <laughs> and it never goes well in those things. It never goes well in cases like that. So that is my worry for United, and, and for me, it's, it's just the community shield, but there's that background. If United win, mm. of course, it, it buys him a bit of time. For me, a competitive United is good for the Premier League, but um, you can't say that you can define their direction. And there are so many people who have doubts about Eric Ten Hag, and I don't, but I also don't think he has the players to turn around that team in the way that many United fans expect him to. Um, yeah. Well, we shall know what sort of United will turn up over the weekend when we return next week. Uh, Spotlight has to end here this week. Join us again. Bye for now.